Well, good evening, folks. This is Bill Breeden, and I want to welcome you to my Constellation Tour number 31. Tonight, we're going to talk about Aries the Ram, and this is a northern celestial hemisphere constellation that lies along the ecliptic. We are currently work making our way through the ecliptic constellations. So there, there isn't a whole lot in Aries on my list tonight, so I'm going to go over with you how I set up Stellarium. Normally I already have it set up when we start these tours, but tonight I thought I would do something a little different. So I've, I've just opened up the program here, and it is it opens up facing south. It opens up to my current location here, which is in St. Louis. It opens up to a 60 degree field of view by default. That is because that's the best way to simulate, to simulate a naked eye view of the sky. So to set this up, the first thing I want to do is choose a date. And tonight we're going over Aries. And Aries is best viewed from the northern hemisphere between November and January. So it's a winter constellation. So I'm recording this video ahead of time and Stellarium opened up to the current time and date here, July 17th at 1.42 in the afternoon. So of course it opens up to the daytime. So we wanna come over here to the left and change our date and time. And since Aries starts becoming visible in November. Let's start with November. And let's choose a date in mid-November. The 17th is fine. And let's let's go ahead and forward our way to the night time. And let's go for about 8 p.m. There we go. November 17th at 20 hundred hours. So the next thing I do is adjust the light pollution for suburban sky. So come over here again to the left, click on sky and viewing options, and I usually select five to simulate a suburban sky with moderate light pollution. So now I move down a little bit. Now I have Stellarium set up for November 17th, 2020 with a 60 degree field of view. And I have it set up for one minute now after 8 p.m. So this is how I set up Stellarium for a simulated stargazing session for a date and time other than the current date and time and for light pollution that may differ from what I actually have for demonstration purposes. So let's get back to the, the business of observing Aries tonight. So let's let's start by finding Aries. And what I would do is in the winter time, let's see, in the winter time, it might be too late to find the great square of Pegasus. Let's see. Oh, one thing I forgot to do, I forgot to turn the meteor showers off. That would be Shift Control M. The only thing I really want to show up here to simulate as close as possible to what the real sky looks like. It's okay if planet names and maybe a few bright star names, but other than that, I just want to see what you would see in the sky. So I think I found the great square Pegasus. I think this is it right here. And if that's the case, then Andromeda should form a line of stars coming off the upper left side of the great square. So that takes me to Pegasus and Andromeda. And if you go, let's see, if I remember one of my previous videos, Pisces should be right below Pegasus. So we should look for the circle or the circlet.
do you see the circlet? Is this it right here? Let's cheat. Yeah, this is the circlet right here. Okay, so we have Pisces starts there, goes in a V pattern, and comes back up this way. So finding Aries is tricky because it's a small, faint constellation. So what you want to do is find Pisces, as hard as that is, and Pisces is going to be to the right of Aries. And then Taurus is going to be to the left of Aries. So Aries is going to be between Pisces and Taurus. Now, the, the best way to find Taurus is to look for the bright star Aldebaran and the Pleiades. So this is Taurus over here, and this is Pisces over here. So Aries is in this part of the sky right here. Let's have a look at our constellation lines. And you can see that these two bright stars are medium brightness stars here next to each other are basically all that you're going to see to find Pisces, I mean to find Aries. So let's have a look at the area of the sky that Aries takes. And it's this area right here. This part of the sky right here is Aries the Ram. Let's have a look at the mythical constellations, the mythical figures. And you can see Aries is depicted as a small ram right here, just between Taurus the bull, and luckily Taurus is pretty easy to find with the Pleiades and this star Aldebaran right here. It's kind of a reddish star. It's about, it's almost as red as Mars. And it's interesting because the date I'm simulating here, you have you have Mars and Aldebaran are both in the sky at the same time. Okay, so now that we have found Aries, the ram, I'll show you here the line of the ecliptic. And the, as you can see, the ecliptic here, that shows you the path that the sun follows through the sky. So after the sun leaves Pisces um, on April 18th each year, the sun will cross into Aries and travel across Aries between April 18th and May 14th every year. And then on May 14th, it crosses the border into Taurus. So there's the ecliptic right here, which tells you that also the moon and planets will also appear in this general area of the sky anytime they they pass through Aries. Okay. So there are no really bright stars in Aries. You do have these two here that act as a signpost to it. This one here is Hamel, or the Alpha Star. And then this one here is Beta, or Sheraton in Aries. So it looks like Stellarium is indicating that Beta is a double star. Let's see, was, was the Alpha star? No, Hamel's not a uh, double star, but, but Beta is. So let's have a look at Beta through the finder scope. And it doesn't seem to split at this magnification. Let's see what an eyepiece does for us. And through a 13 millimeter Nagler, it's not splitting. Um, I didn't have it on my list, so it might be a difficult one to split. Let's try it manually. No, this is a tough one to split. It must be, must be really, really tight. I mean, you can try it, but you may, it may not be an easy one to split. Okay, let's let's go to a dark site. Let's make it dark. And for this, I'll change the light pollution level in, in my videos. I'm using two. Um, I could use one. I think one is darker than most than most of us can get to as far as dark skies. So I I err on the side of being conservative with this and I switch to I use a two for a dark site. This may even be darker than most of us have access to, but it's certainly more doable than a, than a one level.
Okay, we are we are observing from a dark site now. Let, let's try to find Aries again. Let's go over that again. And whether you start with the great square of Pegasus or even just use the Pleiades and Aldebaran, it's it's up to you. Here's the great square, and here's the circlet of Pisces. So you know that Aries is going to be to the left of that area. And then if you go way over here, you'll see Aldebaran and the Pleiades. So that tells you that Aries is between those two parts of the sky. And look for the two medium level bright stars that are together. That would be Alpha and Beta of Aries. So I do have one double star listed in Aries, the ram, and that is Gamma Aretas. So, and to, to simulate using a go-to telescope in Stellarium, I come over here to the left and, and click on the search menu. And then just, um, you can use the Greek letters down here, or you can just type in G-A-M for gamma. I'm going to use the Greek letter. And then the uh, three-letter abbreviation for the constellation. Now, Aries, I believe, is A-R-I. Most of them are pretty obvious. Some of them you may have to look up. So there's Gamma Aretas, and it's showing this here as Gamma 1, which is a good sign that we're looking at, a, at an easier to split double star. Let's have a look at it through the finder. And here's Sherrod, and here's the Beta star here, which is interesting. And through the finder, it sort of looks like it's trying to split for us. Sometimes it helps to do it manually, and when that's the case, I just zoom in a little further than, than I would with the eyepieces that are provided. And then you can get this one to split. This is a fourth, a 4.6 magnitude double star, and it looks like two equal brightness components. 200 light years from Earth. Okay, and then I'll turn our boundaries back on and just give you a, a view of Aries again, the part of the sky that, that encompasses Aries. And this concludes the uh, constellation tour for Aries the Ram. Good night and good seeing.